Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul, where I send my Twitch livestream audience to their preferred destination, providing that they pay with the in-stream currency struts, which they earn by watching. We begin with a supply vessel capturing into Mars orbit. We're not going to locate it just yet, in other words, we're not going to dock it to something to supply the Kerbals because we don't know where it is most needed, and so we are just capturing into orbit around Mars using five Briz engines, uh, engines off of the Briz upper stage from Russia and they are burning UDMH and NTO. And then we'll see where we can get that to. Uh, for now though, we have a escapade to endure, if you will, uh, because we are attempting to land on the surface of Mars, a rarity, uh, because the Kerbals have to pay for that particular privilege. And in this case, it is NST, the Market Gardener, and Pekka, who are attempting to land on Mars. Unfortunately, uh, this is going to be very dangerous, and I, in fact, quick save and name that quick save Pekka's Demise. Um, so, uh, yes, uh, we know it is dangerous, and in fact, uh, there will be many explosions. We will reload that quick save. It was very much my intention to make sure that they came down eventually, but for now, we have a lot of explosions to endure. And that is mainly because these procedural tanks that we have at the bottom here don't do a very good job of heat tolerance and we're coming in from a fairly high orbit, so hotter than expected. But still, I think uh, the heat tolerance might not have been enough. We obviously don't have an extra heat shield there. Uh, the speeds in general from Mars orbit are not that high and Mars's atmosphere is not that thick, so it's potentially the case that we could have done without a heat shield, but it doesn't seem like these procedural tanks are up to the task. So anyway, I reloaded and tried a somewhat different tactic. We are going to aerobrake in the atmosphere first before bringing it down instead of coming straight down. And so we are at a safer periapsis and it coasts on out of the atmosphere after bringing itself down a little bit. I decided that it might be helpful to run the engine somewhat to prevent, you know, an imminent explosion here. Uh, we do see the temperature gauges full, and so we're desperately trying to cool off and also uh, bring our apoapsis down for the next pass. So it survived that pass through the atmosphere, and here we go again, somewhat lower, and still with the high temperatures, and I'm running the engines again to try and uh, prevent it from overheating. Uh, we are slowing down so that we're gonna take on less heat from the from encountering the atmosphere, but that didn't work out. The tanks exploded and yeah, that's not going to work for us. So we need to take some sort of different tactic and the different tactic I decide upon is to have the little lander ride on top of Starship. Like that. So Starship is going to do the air braking and try to protect the little lander. And then after we've air braked somewhat into low Mars orbit, then the lander will proceed on down to the surface. Now, the Starship isn't perfectly balanced right now. Uh, we are not using the fins in the configuration that I ultimately figure out is best. Uh, so. And I eventually have custom fins, but these are procedural parts ones. So yeah, after a little while, I do get a starship that can land on Mars. But right now, this is this is an unbalanced starship. So it does expose the lander a bit, but not enough so that the lander blows up. So that's the important part. All right, eventually the lander parts the starship, having gotten down to a lower orbit. We might have been able to go even lower if I wasn't worried about Starship potentially ending up crashing into the surface, right? If we accidentally go too low, then Starship is down and we, well, we've lost quite a lot of supplies that are on board that Starship, uh, in addition to maybe a crew. So we couldn't do that. And so here we are with the lander alone again trying to get down safely. So I do a few burns to adjust the orbit. Got lots of delta V, but we've got those overheating markers again. 
contemplating what to do about this. Still trying to slow down to mitigate the heat. But yeah, no. Nope. Not good enough. These Kerbal tourists are sure troublesome, aren't they? Anyway, uh, this is a different attempt. And this time we clear that heat, so that's good. So progress. Yeah, just uh, adjusting how we approach things. We get a second bout of heat here. And we managed to slow down enough there. So, is this good enough? Are we going to be able to finally reach the surface? Well, there are the temperature gauges again. They're very persistent, actually. And we are losing fuel. Eventually, we need to make sure we have fuel to get back into orbit, too. So, it's tough. And... nope. We lose the bottom tank. And taking a look at the Delta V, maybe... We could land, but I doubt we would be able to get back into orbit again. 3000 is a little bit too tight, but I follow it down to see what else happens. And in fact, that tank also explodes. Yes. All right. So yeah, that tactic doesn't work. So I decide something completely different. Go nose in <laughs> because the capsule actually has higher heat tolerance than those tanks, weirdly enough. I suppose Elon Musk might call this delightfully counterintuitive, but there is a downside, of course. The capsule is more aerodynamic. It has less drag. And eventually we want to flip around so that the engines can help us land. But the thing about having less drag is that we might not slow down enough to deploy the parachutes. So anyway, we do an air braking pass with it first, and then we're headed down, and indeed nothing blows up and we get to a lower altitude, that's great, but we're still going very fast compared to where we would have been at if we were flipped around the other way. So okay, we've got lots of heat now. Docking port also still seems fine. Everything except for the procedural tanks, really. All right, well, here we go. We're gonna incidentally flip around because it's maxed out its pitch anyway. So flip. Now, can we quickly get enough drag so that the parachutes can deploy? They are certainly red right now, but they I normally set them to deploy around 8 to 10 kilometers, at least uh, the drogue chutes. The suspense was truly intense. Unfortunately, we started getting the temperature overheating markers again. So, of course, I turned on the engines to slow down, but it was too late. I was not expecting the overheating once again. I thought we had gotten through that, but no, no. So, I decided to retry once again, this time aware that we are going to get overheating down below again. We come in severely like this. And I think I try to delay when it's going to flip. But again, this has the side effect of not being safe for the parachutes. And we're still going nose first, getting close to where the parachutes are going to deploy. And we weren't able to turn around or slow down in time, so the parachutes just ripped off. And there's no way the engines are going to manage to slow us down in time before we crash into the surface. So, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, not good. So, once more, we were going to figure out how to get these three Kerbals to the surface somehow. Preferably in a way that would allow them to get back into orbit, because otherwise there'd be more trouble. So here we flipped around and started slowing down immediately before the overheating markers appeared. And I decided that that might be the best thing to do. And so it's full on there. We still lose the bottom tank. 
rather suddenly. And there's overheating on the main tank there. But it seemed to be easing up, so I decided to turn off the engines. And this time... This time the parachutes are in good shape. We slow down. But we are missing quite a lot of fuel. Nevertheless, we uh, attempt to land here. The parachutes are doing a good job of slowing us down, so we only need to do a little bit with the engines. And here is the very gentle touchdown. Perhaps too gentle, considering we really need the Delta V here. Still going. Alright, there we go. So it's reading 3,300, but that's definitely not enough to get back into orbit around Mars. And so it is time to go all Martian on this and start ripping off parts. So, yep, anything that we could get rid of, we did, starting with the parachutes, of course. And the landing legs are not going to be useful in space, so we might as well get rid of those. They're pretty heavy, too. So... Yep, they go poof as well. We, as it turns out, can sit on those engine nozzles just fine. <laughs> Let's not talk about that in detail, but uh, yep. So we go back into the cabin and we have a decent amount of Delta V like that, even without removing the docking port, which was possible. So we have about 4,200. Back around Phobos, I decided to get a rescue vehicle ready. And we are getting rid of parts that we won't need. This was uh, intended to be a lander, but it didn't work out for us. So we were just getting rid of the landing parts, like the parachutes and the landing legs again, to save on Delta V. And so this was pushed out of Phobos orbit and we got it into orbit around Mars so that this could rendezvous with it as it now ascends. Uh, incidentally, that rescue vehicle has locked methane and oxygen. It didn't seem like it had much Delta V, but it actually has quite a lot. So, this barely made it into orbit. First of all, we have the main ascent burn, and then we do another burn at Apoapsis. So this one. And we also have to match inclinations with the rescue vehicle, so we did have a little bit of extra Delta V usage. And it ended up pretty tight, as you can see in the two digits of Delta V. And so this handled the rest of the rendezvousing, now with the methane and oxygen unlocked and those engines active, the engines on the orange. And it is matching velocities with the little lander that managed to keep our three Kerbals safe after exploding a hundred times, <laughs> something like that. I decided not to dock. I decided to... Oh, I think we got rid of the docking port, actually. Yeah, it looks like it. So, I don't know when we did that, but I decided that that might be necessary. And, therefore, we needed to EVA the Kerbals out to the rescue vehicle. And so, one by one, they made it over there, ending with Pekka, who uh, did, in fact, meet his demise quite a few times, but... Uh, well, we we saved him anyway. The Lynx lander deorbited itself, and then this rescue vehicle rendezvoused with the starship that had been waiting in orbit. And the starship has a lot of methane and oxygen that can replenish this rescue vehicle, so it'll grab that methane and oxygen so that I can get back to Phobos Station. There we go, all docked, and the fuel being transferred. But we didn't need to do that immediately because there's plenty of supplies on board this there's lots of food water and oxygen where there isn't a lot of food water and oxygen is the mir space station you can see all those warnings there for the international space station and mir so i decided to refocus a little bit closer to home and here we are removing an old supply vessel from the mir space station and that gets deorbited and we launch a vulcan rocket that's the soviet vulcan rocket uh, eight booster energy if you will and we are launching from Baikonur here, and up it goes. Uh, some lag, yes, lag happens. And there we are, magnificent looking rocket though. And booster separation. Uh, 
And I believe this is uh, the same sort of module that we just removed. It's got enough food, water, and oxygen so we don't have to resupply so frequently. Okay, we are in orbit. I don't know why it's not centered. Maybe that was just a mistake. Uh, it's not centered on the top of the Vesuvius stage, unfortunately. That doesn't cause any problems for the stage. And I don't think there was any good reason for that. I think I just accidentally put it on the wrong node because there are these five engines at the bottom of this stage, so just attach it to attach the rocket to the wrong one. But anyway, that did not cause any problems. We got to rendezvous with Mir, and so this is the supply vessel making its rendezvous burn, and then carefully approaching Mir for the docking. We will not have any progress run-ins on this one. So, with it docking, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.